So today we are back in Columbus, Georgia. And uh, before I moved on to anywhere else here in Georgia, I kind of wanted to explore Columbus a little bit. I know that there is a rich history here, uh, all you know, back to way before the Civil War. And in fact, one of the areas we're going to talk about today, which is right here behind me, this is Fort Mitchell. It's from the pre-Civil War area. This is from uh, the Creek War, uh, America versus the Creek Indians. Uh, looking back on it now, not the greatest time in America's history, but it is part of our history. And this fort it has been recreated for history purposes. So I thought I would check it out. It's going to be an interesting day. We're going to learn a little bit about Columbus. And actually, this fort is in Alabama. It's right across the line in Phoenix City. But uh, we're going to we're gonna just have some fun in the area today. It's gonna to be interesting. In the early 1800s, the U.S. signed a treaty with the Creek Indians to use a footpath, a road basically. For a it became known as the Federal Road. This road that's now paved here, this was the Federal Road. They just paved over it for modern day. In 1813, then General John Floyd of the Georgia militia came here to Columbus to set up a supply base. That supply base was called Fort Mitchell and she sits right there. U.S. troops were actually stationed here inside of this fort until 1837 and uh, they built it here because this was a, an Indian trade route. This was the main Indian trade route to the Tom Bigby River. And they built it to cut them off. Along with the fort, there is also a few other buildings in the area we'll check out before we move on to the next spot today. They have recreated it to look exactly as historical records depicted it to look. This was the blacksmith shop here stables for the horses these areas were uh guard houses where guards could go up and and live and be able to look out over the sight line of the fence to see if indians were coming this way it appears that they did not open it up for us to be able to check out it's padlocked there's another one over in that corner that maybe they would have left open people who work here have said that they have seen some paranormal activity go on here on the location and this was all pre-civil war and uh, you can imagine u.s troops just filling this place up living and and just going on about their daily activities here there's an old carriage there here's another one Oh yes, this door is open. And you could imagine this fort being filled with soldiers dressed like this with their muskets and bayonets. Then up here in the upper portion of it, it's much the same with the holes for them to stick their rifles through their muskets. And then they would have had bunk beds stationed out here in the center for them to sleep on just as they got it depicted here the other corner that they had locked i'm sure looked exactly like this one on the inside yeah the uh i don't know that any paranormal investigators have come and done anything out here but i know that uh employees who work here have reported having paranormal experiences here 
because not only did the fort sit here there was an old indian trading post that they took over and then over off to this side of the fort told me well first starters i guess this is supposed to be a tour vehicle to tour the property but just off to the right of it was an old creek war hospital they had an old it was just a wood building built right here that had a hospital inside where people you know had limbs cut off or uh people even died in it and he said that they're doing the necessary research to be able to reconstruct it for view for public consumption and it's set right here and they're going to rebuild it right here in the very near future who knows indians a lot of u.s soldiers probably perished in that hospital and that's probably why there is some paranormal activity out here to this day this building here was an old trading post that sat on the indian trade route and uh when the u.s when the u.s troops came and built their fort they kind of took over the indian trading post this is some of the items they would have sold blankets saddles guns flour sugar grain salt gunpowder if you're not paying attention these these cutouts of u.s soldiers from 1830 they'll startle you if you just catch them out of the corner of your eye that's for sure this was fort mitchell's carriage house here uh in the early 1800s this is they would have kept their carriages in here like they have them now of course these are um staged but the, this would have housed all their carriages they they would have parked the carriages inside here and then just walked their horses probably out that door down there they would wonder if these are recreations if they are real or what i mean some of them have intricate details on them this is a a real candle holder here wow how about this the old federal road u.s mail i was just talking about the old federal road and this would have been a mail carrier this is a a mail truck a u.s mail truck a hearse you know i went into a museum down in um Tallahassee I believe where they had one of Abraham Lincoln's hearse looked um, looked almost just like that look at the old candle lantern there this one looks really old just called a square box buggy well I think they got them mixed up I think that's the square box buggy there that old Studebaker logo there. That's cool. This one's got two lantern things up here, so it was fancy. And an Amish style buggy here. So pretty neat history here at Fort Mitchell. I think it'll be really cool once they build the hospital outside here and you know they can stock it with the mannequins like what's up on top of the carriage here and make it look like a, a real creek war or civil war era hospital that that would be really cool are you happy that you don't have to pull these carriages around anymore big guy i bet you are now up the hill a little bit from the fort is the Creek Indian Trail of Tears here. This is approximately one mile due east of this marker. Back down the old Federal Road stood Fort Mitchell, which we just left. And there's another marker right over here. The removal of the creeks the creek indians and their neighbors the uchi once lived in these woods in harmony with nature so oh look at this giant spider web here how, how do we get around it 
Oh, there's a spider. Yeah, right there. I'm gonna kill it. No, just duck under it right here. And be on the lookout for more. So the Creek Indian Heritage Society and the Fort Mitchell Heritage Society, they have built a monument back here to those Creek Indians who were displaced. The problem is it's like a million percent humidity here in the South United States, the Southeast United States today. It's so hot and humid. Oh my goodness. There she is there. Over 200 years ago, here out here in all this land, Indians were just living in their teepees and stuff out here in the woods. And I guess this is a just a monument they built in honor of the Creek Indians who were removed from this area. Indian ball ground. The most popular game among the Indians of this region was stickball. The field has been constructed so that the game may be enjoyed again in the Chattahoochee Valley where it was played hundreds of years ago. Okay, so the Creek Indians carved out this field so they could play stickball. I guess it's like a version of baseball. Right, right down there on, on that plane. That's cool. Now we are all hot and sweaty. And uh, well, I guess that's about it for here at Fort Mitchell and the Creek Indian Memorial there behind me. We're gonna leave here and we're gonna move on. Pardon the noise, there's a giant refrigerated truck that just feels the need to run its engine I guess it's, it's a, like the air conditioner part running but um, man you know we had a fun day today oh I'm dark we had a fun day today checking out all of the uh, the old fort there, there is a lot more stuff here in Columbus that we can see there's several true crime stories I want to do while I'm in Georgia some interesting ones and some some despicable ones some crazy ones that you would never think happened so we're gonna have a lot of fun while we're here Parker and I after getting so hot out at the fort and stuff we're gonna take a dip in the pool before we wrap this video up just to try to cool off a little bit because man the humidity here in Alabama Georgia is just so ridiculously high the, the temperatures are are well over triple digits right now and you, you're just so hot being out here so we're gonna hop in the pool and try to cool off it got really hot today now I've got a special wrap on my leg one that uh, I can just throw away after I get out this will actually be the first time this summer I will have gotten to go get in a pool and submerge it in water before now I haven't been able to but it's completely submerged man it feels so good after being out in the humid temperatures at the fort and everywhere today, it feels so good being in the pool. Whew. Well, I reckon we're gonna end it here. It's been an interesting day just checking out the site, the places here in Columbus. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, go down and click that subscribe button. You can take it a step further, hit that notification bell icon. That way you get notified for every video I upload. Got a bunch of good videos coming from Georgia here in the very near future, like we're right in the middle of it. So uh, make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any of them. If you want to help support the channel, check out the links down in the description box below. Always much appreciated. Thank you all so much. 
I will see you again tomorrow. I hope you have a great day. Please stay safe and stay healthy. And it's summer still. Here in Alabama, school don't start back for a couple more weeks. So try to have some fun and enjoy your summer.